Today, we are going to combine three different creative techniques. We're going to play around with gels, mylar, and shutter drag. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here. And when I'm in the studio, even if I'm just shooting in front of a plain background, I don't ever feel like I run out of ideas and that's because I have a lot of creative tools and techniques in my pocket. And it gets even more creative and really I have endless options when I begin to mix and match them. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to gels. Then we're going to add a creative DIY background and then an in-camera creative technique. So let's just start at the beginning with our main light. The main line in this scene is a Profoto D2. And on that D2, I have a medium umbrella with diffusion and a blue gel. So what does that mean? Fundamentally, I have a soft light source that's going to be blue and I have it off to the left-hand side of the frame and raised up pretty high. So that's going to give a beautiful kiss of blue light to her face. And we're going to begin there so that I can build in the scene. So right now I'm shooting at F8 ISO 200, one two hundredth of a second. And you can see that I have some cool things going on already. So first of all, I've already introduced that beautiful blue color, but now you can actually see the background that I have set up. So behind my subject, I have something called Mylar. And Mylar is this kind of silver plastic metal material and uh, it's frequently used in product photography. I've used it before in some of my YouTube videos for creating textures of light on the face, but in this instance, I'm using it as a background. And you can see that the light is not only hitting the subject, but also reflecting upon the background and it gives me a little bit of an interesting texture. What I wanna do is I wanted to introduce more than one color. I don't want this to be a monochromatic image. And that is where my second strobe comes into play. My second strobe is another Profoto D2 on a floor stand, but this time I'm going to add a red gel. There's no modifier on that second strobe at all, but now that I've added the red gel, it's going to sparkle all over that mylar. And so I am going to be playing with a warm, cool contrast. So I have the coolness on the subject from the blue gel and now this warm, fiery red gel on the background. So let me add that second strobe into the equation. Now, so far this red is pretty subtle, but we're gonna play around with some techniques. We might see it a little bit more later on. Now, one thing I want you to notice is that although it is red, it starts to look like it's shifting a little bit pink or magenta. And why is that? It's because the red is mixing with the blue and that's what gives the illusion of it being kind of a, a pink color. All right, so, so far I have my main light lighting the subject. Then I have the mylar in the background for texture. Then I've added another strobe with a red gel to that background. And now I'm going to add a third light source, but this time it is not a strobe. In this instance, I am going to add a Nanlite constant LED tube. So this is a constant LED light source. There is no strobe. It is going to be a continuous light. So let me add that light into the scene. And I'm thinking because the background is looking kind of reddish pink magenta, I'm actually going to set this Nanlite to be magenta already so that it kind of matches the color harmonies I'm working with. Okay, so now taking a look at this photograph, what is different from the previous images? Well, you can see a little bit of that magenta pink on the background, which is nice, it's another layer of color. But I have this around to the front, basically as a fill light lighting my subject, and in the photograph I just took, you couldn't see it at all. Why is that? Well, it's because it's a constant light. It's not showing up enough. And so I have other videos on YouTube that are listed in the description below that explain step-by-step step the concept of shutter drag. But fundamentally what it means is when you use a longer exposure, you're letting in more constant or more ambient light. And so in order to actually see this nan light, in order to see this constant light, I need to use a slower shutter speed. So right now I'm at F8, ISO 200, one two hundredth of a second, but I'm going to drop my shutter speed all the way down to an eighth of a second. Yeah, that's right, one over eight, an eighth of a second. And so by having the shutter open for that long, some of this light is going to start to register on the subject's face. And that's going to give us some creative opportunities, which we'll look at next. So let's go to the eighth of a second. Okay, so now you can see that that long shutter speed gave a lot of time for this nan light, constant light LED to show up. But now that I'm using a long shutter speed, 
this is where I can kind of play around with things. I can experiment, I can try, try something with a little bit of motion perhaps. And that's one of the benefits of shutter drag. So shutter drag just means that I was having the shutter open for a long time, but now I'm going to introduce movement of my camera. And there's no right way to do this, but I am going to move my camera in circles. I'm going to zoom the lens. I'm gonna shake it around because what will happen is during that longer exposure and with that movement, you're going to start to see streaks of light. Some might be a little bit of streak of light on our face, but you're definitely going to see streaks of light on that mylar. Now, one of the things that I do want to mention is you might be worried that her face won't be really in focus, right? Because a long exposure and camera movement, you're going to see a lot of blur. But the strobe that I have on the left-hand side of the frame, it is freezing the subject. Now, if there's other light in the room, perhaps, that will be what starts to register on my subject and cause a little bit of blur. So my recommendation for this technique is that you turn off all ambient light. So any lights overhead, maybe you close the curtains of the window. And for example, in this shot, I'm going to turn off the light that is on me because that would actually show up on my subject and affect my frame. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take another shot, but this time I'm going to move my camera. And I'm going to move it a couple different ways and just show you a variety of the, the different results that can be achieved with just little changes in your motion. So will you turn off that light real quick? Thank you. And that's a zoom. And this is a zoom and a wiggle. And this is a zoom and a circle. So you can see that I added little different camera movements and the results are quite different. And there's no one that's better than the other and you just have to experiment. So when you do this technique, you'll have a lot of frames that you'll definitely throw out, but you'll find a few frames that are killer. Now, just a couple more things before I go and get this shot. For this shot, I'm gonna be shooting with the Canon R5 and the Canon RF 70-200 2.8 lens. Now, you definitely wanna do this with a zoom lens because that gives you another uh, variable that you can introduce with motion. A fixed lens, you'll be able to move side to side and in and out, but it won't give you that zoom capability. Next up, let's talk a little bit about this Nanlite. The Nanlite is a Nanlite Pavo tube. Now it comes in different sizes. This is the two foot tube. What's really great about this is I can give myself quite a bit of control. So it's full RGB. I can change it to any color that I want. I can also change the saturation and the brightness or darkness. So as I'm shooting at that slow shutter speed, if I think that the side of her face is showing up too bright or maybe the reflections in the background are too bright from that nan light, no problem. I can simply turn down the power. I can make it appear dimmer. So that's why this is really, really nice as a constant light source for this creative shot. But if you're trying this at home and you've never done it before, you could honestly use any constant light source, even something as simple as a lamp or even your cell phone with all the brightness turned up. But obviously this is going to make it a lot easier for me. So with all of those things in mind, I'm going to try different zooms and we try different compositions, but it's all about experimenting because I'm looking forward to being surprised. Let's give this a try and let's turn off this light. Great. You can see in these images that I use three different tools and techniques available at my disposal for getting creative. And so I regularly will use shutter drag. Sometimes it's just a little bit subtly, so the image looks more painterly. Uh, sometimes I will use one gel, two gels, three gels, five gels, and in this case, a DIY background in the form of Mylar. So when I start mixing and matching all of these different tools and techniques, there really is no limit to the creativity. And when you look at this shot, it's really creative, but I think you can tell that I had a lot of fun. Now, if you wanna see the gear that I used in the making of this image, be sure to check out the links in the description below. And of course, visit Adorama.com. And if you wanna learn more about creativity and more about how I see the world, you'll wanna visit learnwithlindsay.com. I have tons of tutorials. For example, a creative lighting recipe guide. I also have a course about the magic of gels. So if this is the kind of thing you're into, you're going to wanna check that out. But obviously you're going to want to like and subscribe because I have many more videos just like this one coming your way. See you next time.